Now that we're tracking when users join and leave, we can use that data to send their messages to just the room they're currently in. Now, getting that done is something you already know how to do, so it's gonna be your challenge for the video. Right here, let's go ahead and outline what I'd like you to do. What I'm gonna do is paste in the challenge comments, and here is what you're gonna do. You're going to make sure that messages get sent to the correct room and you're gonna start with the send message event listener right here. So inside of here, you need to use get user to fetch the user by their socket ID. That's gonna give you access to user data such as the room they're in and their username. From there, you're only going to emit the message to the correct room. So you wanna make sure that if they're in the South Philly room, the South Philly room gets the messages they're sending. And then you're gonna test your work. So join the same room with two users, you should see each other's messages, then have them join separate rooms and you should not see the messages from each user. Now, once you've done that, you'll do the exact same thing for the send location event listener down below. So all you're gonna do is edit these two functions using the techniques described up above to get the messages sent to the correct room. Take some time to knock that out. And when you're done, come back and click play. All right, let's get to it. Step number one is to use get user to fetch that user data. So right here, const user equals. I'll be calling get user providing their ID, that is socket.id, then we can use that data when sending our messages off. So down below, what are we gonna do? Right here, all we're going to do is use io.2. We're going to provide the user's room, that is user.room, and then we're going to emit the message to it. And that's it. That's all we needed to do, but when we weren't tracking the user, that just wasn't possible. Now down below in send location, we can do the same thing before testing our work. So right here, once again, const user equals using get user and providing their socket ID. Then down below, we need to chain on the to method call. That is io.2, calling that as a function, followed by dot emit. And right here, that would be user.room, perfect. So now that we have this in place, we can actually go ahead and test things out for both. Now over in the browser, after saving our files, we can test things out. So I'm gonna refresh both windows, and right now we have both Andrew and Andy in that JS chat room. Right here, I'm gonna send a message, and I should see it for both, and I do. Then I'll have the other user send their location, and that should show up for both as well once the location is fetched and it is showing up. So great start. Now let's get one of the users out of that JS chat room and into a different room. So over here, I'll go over to localhost 3000. I'm notified that Andy left and I'll have Andy join a different room like HTML. Right here, I'm gonna join, and I can see that I'm not notified of him joining, and if he sends a message like, hey, that message is only gonna show up for other users in the room. Right here, the same is true with location messages. This user is communicating, and this user is not seeing it because they're in separate rooms. Now that we're tracking users, it's possible to send messages to just those rooms using the little bit of code we added here. So with this in place, we're all done with the challenge and we're gonna go ahead and remove those challenge comments. Now we're not quite done for the video. There are still a few things I wanna knock out before we move on. One of the most important missing features is that the username doesn't show up alongside of the message in the chat app. Right now we have a space for it in the user interface, but it's not actually being populated. And the reasoning for that is that the data is never sent to the client. When we emit message or location message, we are not providing the name we want to show. So we're gonna fix that. We're gonna start together with generate location message, then it'll be your challenge to do something similar for regular text messages. So the goal here is to make sure that the object that gets sent back to the client contains all of the information it needs. 
Now in messages.js for generate location message, this takes in the URL and it sends back an object with the URL and created app. We're also going to have it take in the username and send that back as well. And I'm actually gonna make that the first argument. So right here, the first argument will be the username and the second argument will be the URL. Then on the object that I end up sending from server to client, I'm just going to include that username alongside of the other pieces of data. So now we do need to change how we're calling generate location message since the first argument should be the user's name. So right here we have the URL as the current only argument being provided. We wanna provide user.username as the first one. Perfect. So now at this point, at least the necessary data is finding its way to the client. It's now the client's job to actually use it. So over here in chat.js, our client side JavaScript file, we have our event listeners up above. I have the event listener for message and location message. In this case, we're working with the location message. Now, one of the problems here is that the template doesn't get access to this new data. So we wanna supply that on the object, just like we're supplying the URL. So right here, let's go ahead and get that done. That would be username, getting the value from message.username, perfect. Now with this in place, the template should be getting the correct data and we can use it inside of chat.html. So right here, we're working with this location message and this is where we have the static name. I'm gonna remove that, open and close two curly braces, then username right inside. So at this point, we're sending the data from server to client and the client is using it. Now, when I refresh the browser and send a location message, I would expect that the actual username shows up alongside of it. So right here, I click send location. It still takes a couple of seconds to actually get that data, that's fine. And right here, I do see Andrew alongside of the message, which is fantastic. Now that username is being transferred along with the URL and timestamp. All three are then shown to the user in the browser. Now it's time to get the exact same thing done for our regular text-based messages. And since you already know the necessary steps to do it, doing it is gonna be your challenge. So what I'm gonna do is add that somewhere in index.js. I'll just put these comments up top and out of the way. So right here, goal. Render username for our standard text messages. Right now, we're only rendering it for those location messages. Step one, you're going to set up the server to send the username to the client. This means you need to edit the function, generate message to accept the username and to include it along with this object. And once you have that in place, you need to edit every single call to generate message in this file. You need to add the username just like we did for our one call to generate location message. Now, when it's not coming from a user, but it's coming from the system, you can use the username admin. This would be useful for things like connect and welcome and disconnect. This should be SYS for a system message. So you either use the username or for these specific ones, you can just use something generic like admin. Now, once you have all of those calls updated, the client needs to actually do something with the new data it gets. You wanna make sure the username is rendered in the template. Then you're gonna test your work. If you do what we just did here, I would expect to see admin for the welcome message. And if I typed a standard message and sent it, I would expect to see my name right here. So take some time to knock that out. When you're done, come back and click play. How'd that go? Let's get to it by editing the generate message function. So this is going to accept a username and I'm gonna add that as the first argument, though technically you could have put it as the second one. And then down below, we'll just go ahead and toss that on the object that we send back from server to client. Now with this in place, we just need to make sure that we actually provide the username for every single call 
to generate message. So right here, we have our first calls inside of on join. I send a system message welcome and another system message saying that a given user has joined. For both of these, what I'm gonna do is provide admin as that first argument. That is the username I'd like to use. Perfect. These are system messages and we'll stick with a static username for that. Next up down the list, where else do we generate a message? Well, right here, we do that when sending text-based messages. Now, in this case, this is coming from a user and we want their name to show up. So that would be user dot username as the first argument with their message as the second. Next up, generate message is also used in on disconnect. So right here, when they leave, we send a system message. And for this, we're going to set the username equal to admin. Now that we have all of this in place, the server is sending the correct data to the client. The client just needs to actually use it. So let's go ahead and knock that out. In chat.js up above, this is where we now have access to message.username. I'm going to provide that to my template. And once it's provided to the template, I'll save the file and change the template up above. I have my standard message template, and all I'm gonna do is remove some username and replace it with two opening and two closing curly braces, inside putting the value for username. Now with all of this in place, we finished off steps one, two, and three. The data gets sent from server to client and the client uses it. Last up is to test our work. What I'm gonna do is remove those challenge comments and make sure my entire program is saved. And we're gonna head over to the browser and give things a refresh. Right here, I see admin, which is a great first start. I can send a location message, which should already be working, and I would expect to see Andrew. Then I could send a text message like, hey, hit enter. And what do I see? I can see the name showing up. So there we go. Now users' names are showing up alongside of their messages. To wrap up this video, let's go ahead and make a couple of small changes to our message input down below. It doesn't really make sense to use autocomplete here since we're not gonna be using the same value over and over again. And we're also going to add that required attribute on to ensure that it's provided by the client. So in index.html, what we're gonna do, whoops, excuse me, it's in chat.html. What we're going to do is make a couple of small changes to our input right here. Now the one attribute we've already used that was required, we used that inside of index.html for the username and the room name. So this is gonna make sure that we at least get some value. The other one we're gonna use is not something we've used before, that is auto complete and we're setting that equal to the string off. This is going to turn off the autocomplete functionality, which we don't want. Now, you don't always want to turn that off, but for this particular input, it does make sense to. For something like an email or a name, you should allow them to use the autocomplete feature as they're likely using values they've used before for other websites. Right here, we refresh the browser once again. Down below, I click send and I can see that I get my little warning, so I type a message in, and I can see that I'm not getting any sort of autocomplete functionality like I was getting when I typed in H before. I was seeing hey with an exclamation mark. Now I'm not getting any of that, which is great. This is a much nicer, cleaner interface. So with this in place, that's where we're gonna stop for now. Users are getting the username of the sender showing up. What we're gonna focus on from here is that sidebar. So in the sidebar, we're going to put the name of the room you are currently in, and we're gonna keep a live list of all of the active users just down below that. I'm excited to get to that, so let's jump right in to the next one.